Considering home security? Consider this. For 140 years, ADT has helped stop more crime than any other home security company. The yard sign isn't just a sign. It's a line in the sand. It's no wonder five times more people choose ADT to protect their homes. Visit ADT.com to learn more. For license information and terms and conditions, visit ADT.com. Slow jamming our way through a Friday morning. Friday, mm-hmm. yay, as we call it around this show. <laughs> Glad yeah. you're with us. You know, it's, that's what... You call it. No, you okay. Say- no, no, no. You you can go ahead and have that one, okay? Yeah. I'm going to let that be a tray thing right there, Fry-Yay. Uh, I'm telling uh, Stanzik, who is one of our wonderful people behind the glass, is telling us that's what the kids call it, Fry-Yay. Okay. So, trying to be young, huh? Well, you know, yeah. the, the hair is a giveaway that I'm not really trying that hard. Also, the <laughs> fact that you said the Twitter a the little Twitter, while ago. The Twitter, and you said the, the, social, the social media. media. Yeah. And what, what did yeah. President Bush say? The internet? Yeah, we so need that, to get, that's we, where we are. We, we need to get my son back. Is, is, that, the whole, is that the holy triumvirate? <laughs> holy the Twitter, smokes. the social media, and the internet. And one of the things somebody brought up, we did a little thing, had a little fun called Try Trey, and getting yeah. to know Trey a little bit, and, and ask him, you know, either what if type of questions or... or uh, and one of the questions was, would you rather or would you rather questions live 100 years in the past or 100 years in the future? And you said in the past, that way, not only for personal gain because you know some things, Bank. maybe maybe you could help some Avoid people. Avoid some things that, that went wrong. Now, Christopher is saying you don't mess with the timelines. You correct the wrong. A bigger wrong replaces it. That's, all. That's true. The, you know, it's the ripple effect. You correct something, you don't know what else may happen None because of, us of it. None of us know that because it's, it's, I understand the butterfly effect. I, yeah. I, I understand what they're talking about, but none of us know that. Right. Well, we've seen the, all these movies where it happens, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. no one's ever gone back in time to actually do it. But all those movies, and how do you know that? Yeah. And all those movies are true. You think it's real? It's absolutely okay. real. All right then. Get out of Don't mess with with history. I'm man. doing it. I'm doing it. All right. I'm doing. I'm it. doing it completely for personal gain. Right. At least but you're I'm honest about it. it. Yes. I'm yes. doing it for the good. I'm of humanity. I'm not going to try and and be altruistic about it and yeah. screw up something else. Yeah. I'm just going to get mine. How does that sound? That sounds about right. There actually, you go. Okay. I, I actually respect that more than anything else you've ever said. So <laughs> we are presented awful. by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. A Sugats will join us in a little yes. bit. I'm sure he has some things that he's upset about and wants to get off his chest. Yeah, I know he and. I might battle on one thing. Yeah, but I, I do have to say one thing. Um, you know, the Thursday night game between the Broncos and the Colts, uh, there was a scary incident with the uh, the tight end, Brandon Williams, right. for the Colts. Who on, a, on a special teams on play. On special teams play. And it looked like just a tap of the helmet. He was carted off, and, and uh, you know they had to cut off the face mask, he, face mask and put him on the board and put him on the cart. The good news here uh, is that he's okay. Uh, he was released from the hospital, only diagnosed with a concussion. But i got to tell you, Mike, that shook me watching that because that was the second time in ten days yeah. on a on a nationally televised game uh, that we had seen a player carted off the field, uh, and I was watching with my son, yeah, who played college football for a few years at Georgetown, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it was real for him because one of his teammates that happened to one of his teammates, uh, Tyrell, uh, and uh, it it, it uh, he's you know he's he's doing he's he's doing better now, but he's you know he's he's still trying to. Right, get through things, and mm-hmm. and uh, we're always glad to talk to him and see him doing well. But it 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 hits you, man, and uh, the idea that that was happening again, I, I don't know why. It just it really got to me, and uh, I I can't tell you how happy I am that I'm glad that he's okay. Well, I mean, listen, you had somewhat through your your son a personal, more of a closer to a personal experience yeah. with this. You know, we all saw what happened with Ryan Shazier. You know, so much more we we talk about with, with the head injuries, and that we haven't seen this in a while with the the neck and the back like you saw with Shazier and you saw with with uh, Brandon last night uh, like I said I, I go back to when I was playing when you saw a little more of it I was playing with you know Mike Utley and Mike Utley and Dennis yeah. Bird you know where where that was the big thing that the paralysis the you know was it going to come back you know was it a bruise that had to that had to heal and swelling to go down and you get the feeling back with Utley that didn't happen with Dennis Bird. We saw he was able to walk again. And now as we find out, it's been more about the concussions and we're finding out more and more about that. But we've seen guys getting carted off like this. It's a, it's a horrible, that's a horrible feeling. There's a, there's a realization to you, uh, from the, from the fan, from your standpoint and then from the players, man, on the field, when you see that, as I said, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure someone's moving. Right. And you feel it, you figure if someone's moving everything, then okay, it's not, they're, they're on a, they're on a stretcher going off and they're moving everything. So it's probably not going to get any worse. You know, it's when Ryan Shazier isn't moving his legs that you're like, Oh my God, you know, what, what's, what's going to happen here? 
Uh, so it is, it, it is, and, and a lot of time, you know, after the Utley and the Dennis Bird, they would do it on a more of an occasion, and a lot of times it was precautionary, right. where the player seemed to be fine, was moving everything, but they said, you know what, as a precaution, we're going to take you off on a backboard and a stretcher, so it's still tough to see, but a lot of it was more precautionary. So, yeah, those are the, as I said, you see the blown out knees and the elbows and the ankles and all that, and you deal because you know that's part of it. But some of this other stuff, it becomes real. And when you're just coming off the Shazier situation and see another guy, you know, get hit and look like he's out and then be, get carted off the field, it is. It's a scary thing. Look, you're, you're glad he's okay. Uh, yep. you know, he's out of the hospital. Uh, Chuck Pagano said that he's back here. It's a scary thing. He's doing well. And he had, you know, spinal stenosis, which right. is the narrowing of the spine. The spine right. When he was at, when he was at Oregon. Uh, you know, Chip Kelly had to tell him, hey, we don't think you can play football anymore. But he, he went somewhere else and played basketball for a while, right. but wanted to pursue, pursue this, this dream. And look, if this is what you want to do, right. go for it. But it just, it, it really, it really yeah. got to me. And I can't tell you how happy I was when I got up this right. morning and I saw the news that, that he was okay because seeing it again that quickly. It, it you know it just really the first thing you're, you're looking for is you're looking for how they leave the field and then the, you want reports right yeah. away how they doing how they doing they move and everything where are they at so yeah and and lucky luckily to hear for him that uh, that he seems to be going in the right direction absolutely so yep. we wish him nothing but the best as we continue here on Golik and Wingo and uh, now let's bring in the man the myth ah he's just the man he's, mm-hmm. he's there's no myth to him he's he's a rock solid guy yes he's Stu Gatz <laughs> from the Dan Levitard show joins us yeah you are you know despite okay. contrary to popular opinion you are. It's like, uh, okay. you're a good guy. You're a good, we're all three good looking guys. That's from the old movie, The Sure Thing. Look it up, kids. Watch it. You'll like it. By the way, Stu Gatz, can I ask you real quick? I, I love Sims coming on, Chris Sims coming on and breaking down the quarterbacks. He's really coming on every day and breaking down the last 60 of these quarterbacks. I mean, it, he's great. He's hilarious. And I think it's, it's cool what you're doing, but he's going all the way down, huh? Gonna, gonna make this countdown all the way. Yeah, well, he started, you know, Blake Bortles, he announced that Blake Bortles was the 70th best quarterback on his list. And we thought it'd be funny to get the, you know, one through 69 since he threw Bortles out as number 70. So, yeah, today we get uh, number 60 from Sims today. And, yes, he will be on for the uh, for the next 60 days <laughs> giving us uh, his top quarterbacks in the NFL. I, I gotta, the countdown is on. I got to say, I, I look, I'm, I'm not saying that Blake Bortles will win you multiple Super Bowls. But I think right. I think he's actually better than seventieth now, isn't he? I mean, he's he's coming off. I, we looked this up the other day on NFL Live. He's coming off back to back games with multiple touchdowns and no interceptions for only the second right. time in his career. So I think he's kind of trending upwards. Uh, he is. And listen, he has Nathan Peterman ranked ahead of Blake Bortles. And I can't. We've go been there. kind. Of, I, I try. The list is insane. Uh, so we're going to mock sins. We asked him yesterday, like there is a, you know, there's potential here where, where Blake Bortles is hoping up a, holding up a Super Bowl trophy and Chris Sims is going to have to, ba- have to go back and revise this list and apologize to, to Blake Bortles for putting CJ Beathard ahead of, ahead of him on his list. <laughs> uh, it, it's CJ really, Beathard. Yeah. It, 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 hey, I don't care who the quarterbacks are. It's fun. What he's doing is pretty cool. And yeah, he's guaranteeing yeah. himself. Well, a spot on your show for at least the next 60 days, so that helps us. Yes, move. Golick, you're right. He knows what he's doing, Golick. He's promoting that podcast. He knows exactly what moves. he's doing. Yes. Exactly right. He's giving us what he wants, yes, and we're giving him what he wants. All right, the NBA gave us what we all wanted last night, Stugatz. Isn't it what you wanted? The first meeting between LeBron James and Lonzo Ball before they become teammates, right? Uh, why, Mike? You don't think they're going to become teammates? No. Do you think that LeBron's going to stay in Cleveland? Yeah, is that I, what you think? I, yes, I do. I, but I do think he would do that before he goes to L.A., yes. See, now, Mike, I'm with you on L.A. The L.A. part of this is strange. I don't think he's going to stay in Cleveland, but to go and play with, you know, with Lonzo Ball and Brendan Ingram and those guys, I don't think it's enough in L.A. for LeBron to win titles. And at this point, that's all he cares about is tacking on titles to his resume. So I'm with you on the Lakers, unless somehow he is having conversations with – you know, Paul George's and Carmelo Anthony's. And I still don't think that's enough to get past the Golden State Warriors and the Rockets. I could see him going somewhere, though, like Philadelphia or the Houston Rockets. Uh, it's going to depend on whether the Rockets win a title this year, because if they don't, then LeBron can go there and say he's the reason that they won the title. But I think there is zero chance that he is coming back to Cleveland next year, Mike. There is zero chance. Why do you That's say, the why, Cleveland fan in you, man. That's the bias. No, 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 That's the no, bias no, coming no, out no, in you. No, no, no. It's not the Cleveland fan in me, Stu Gatz. They're in the finals every year. So why would he stop going to the finals? If he can still have a team around him to go to the finals, I know it's going to be tough to win. I, I certainly get right. that. Why do you chance that by going somewhere else when all he's about right now is championships? 
Mike, he's getting to the finals, you're right, but he's usually losing with Cleveland when he gets to the finals. And at this age, I can't believe it. I am shocked that LeBron has played in every game. He is playing this many minutes. He is carrying the load still this much on the team. And, Mike, those are the reasons. Like, LeBron, having to play 40 minutes a night and give you nearly a triple-double every single night just so your team has a chance to beat the Lakers, who aren't very good, that's the reason. I think it's become too hard for him, and he wants to go to a place where maybe it's easier, where maybe he can play 30 minutes a night and kind of cruise through the regular season and then, you know, pick up his game and pick up the minutes uh, in the postseason. And that's what he can do if he's playing with Embiid and Simmons of Philadelphia or Horton and Chris Paul in in Houston. I just, I can't imagine he's going to stay there with Kevin Love, with a team that's aging, and Isaiah Thomas is going to be a free agent after this season. Right. That may, I, I get what you're saying there, but but that also means that LeBron won't be the dude. Okay? And one of the reasons Kyrie yep. left, because he wanted to be the dude in Boston, and it's working out well for him, can we see a scenario in which the ball doesn't go through LeBron? Because one of the reasons that Kyrie left was he wanted to have more to say in how this goes. And, and the way he's playing, and at the high level he's playing, I understand what you're saying about resting, but if he's playing this well being the dude, why would he want to go somewhere where he's not the dude? Well, Trey, I mean, are we saying that LeBron James is not the dude anywhere he goes? Even if he right, went but to you, Houston? You just said, Brett, play 30 minutes and sort of coast through the regular oh, season. No, no I, yeah, but he's still the dude. It's just an easier path for him. It's just an easier load for him to kind of carry there. But he's still the guy. It's still LeBron James. I just, I think he's looking for maybe at this point in his career, you know, he's going to be 35 years old. Maybe he's just looking for an easier path, a place where he can play you know, 30 to 35 minutes and not the 40 minutes that he's playing right now. And he doesn't have to be on every single night for them to win a game, which he has to be uh, right now. I'm just thinking maybe there's an easier combination for him, Trey. I still think, listen, he goes to Philadelphia. He's the dude, right? I mean, there's no question about it. He might not play 40 minutes. It might be 32 a night. And he'll have nights where he plays 40 to 45. But he's still the guy, right? He's It's LeBron James. It's the best player in the world. I tell you, it would be intriguing to see him with Embiid and with Ben Simmons. That would be something to see. We'll see down the road. Let's move that would on. be a process you yeah. would trust. That by is the way. a process. Let, yeah. Let, yeah. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's stay in the NBA. We saw Oklahoma City go to Indiana where Paul George had his first return to the Pacers. Got booed, introduction booed every time he touched the ball. They're going to go play the Knicks. That means Melo's going back to the Garden. And it's certainly a different situation. Paul George says, I'm not playing here. I'm going to be gone, so do with me what you will. Carmelo tried to hang around there for a while. You know, it was... It was uh, uh, you know, it wasn't him that was looking bad a lot in the situation that was going on. Then he does end up eventually agreeing to leave. How do you think he gets treated when he goes back to the Garden? I mean, Mike, it doesn't matter what he did, right? I mean, we're going back to New York. These are Nick fans, right? And they are mad. Nick fans are just mad, not because of Carmelo Anthony, just because of the totality of the last 20 years of Nick's basketball. He's going to get booed. Um, I know Phil Jackson was a guy that took the brunt of it over the last couple of years, but the reality is... Carmelo came there, and what came with him are all sorts of expectations that were just never met. And because of that, Nick fans are going to move. And here's the thing that I think drives Nick fans crazy, and I'm one of them. Carmelo, in that final year in Denver, could have just sat there. Could have just sat there and played out the season. But no, he demanded the trade, and the Knicks had to trade basically their entire roster at the time to get Carmelo Anthony, where he could have just sat in Denver, waited, and then signed with the Knicks in the offseason – And they could have kept uh, all of those guys, you know, Gallinari and Wilson Chandler and all those guys. I'm not saying it would have made a difference, but Nick fans are kind of upset about that. And then he just didn't meet the expectations. You know, that's it. That's the bottom line. And therefore, uh, he's headed back to Madison Square Garden. He's headed back to a place that is frustrated with the Knicks organization over the last 15 to 20 years. He's going to get booed in a big, big way tonight. There will be no standing ovation for uh, Carmelo Anthony. Much in the same way. And there shouldn't be. Yeah, much in the same way Paul George got torched uh, in when they went back to Indiana. Okay, let's, let's move on to baseball and, uh, Obviously, it's been an interesting start for Derek Jeter as the face of the Marlins franchise. I get it. He's not uh, really you – know, he's the one that they were, they're asking to make all these decisions. And uh, are, are you still mad at Jeter for how this thing is going down? Um, I, not nearly as mad as Dan is uh, because Miami and the Marlins mean more to Dan than they do to me. I love the city. I've been down here for 20 years. Uh, I don't particularly love the organization. I'm just not a fan of Marlins baseball. I do feel bad on behalf of the city of Miami – I mean, guys, this goes back a long way. This is the third or fourth time they've torn down the team. 
Uh, and so we're just lashing out at Derek Jeter. And I'm not even certain Derek Jeter is the main problem here. You can look back at the past ownership group. You can look at Rob Manfred and Major League Baseball for allowing this sale to go through, knowing Derek Jeter was going to strip the team apart, which doesn't sit well with a lot of people down here. But you got to go back to, like, you know, 97 when Wayne Huizinga owned the team and they won a world championship, and he spent a lot of money to win that world championship with guys like Gary Sheffield. And they traded away the entire team, and they won it in 03, um, and then traded away that team. And the promise was, uh, whether it was in writing or not, the promise was, hey, you guys, Miami, build this stadium for us on the heels of taxpaying dollars, and, you know, we'll have a stadium, and we will spend the proper amount of money to keep this team relevant and to keep this team competitive. And here we are, new ownership group. We thought it'd be a celebratory time down here, especially with Derek Jeter. That was a really cool thing at the start. Wow, Derek Jeter owns the Miami Marlins. That's really cool. One of the all-time greats. And it's just gone the other way. He hasn't made a single right decision since he uh, took over the ownership of the Marlins. Trey, I'm wondering, as a Yankee fan, because has this changed has he changed it all in your eyes, Trey? Because what he's doing here is not right, Trey. Taking pieces like Stanton and trading him to the Yankees and trading away Azuna and trading these guys for next to nothing and just the way he's gone about his business down here where he's not talking to anyone, he's not showing up to the owners' meetings. Trey is a Yankee fan because I know you love him. Has it changed the way you view Derek Jeter? So let me get this straight. You're asking me as a Yankee fan if I'm upset that yeah. Giancarlo Stanton is now with the Yankees. I'm asking you. Uh, well, no, I'm not asking you that. That is too shy, Trey. Too shy. I am asking you if you're upset about how he's treating the city of Miami. Well, That's what I'm asking you. Yeah, Trey. I feel. I feel. Yeah, I. I think that. No, uh, you don't. Yeah, look. I look. I. I think that Marlin fans probably were hoping that this would be different instead of lather, rinse, repeat for a third time. Uh, right. This is. But this is interesting, Stu, because you know Jeter went through his time in New York as the golden child. You know, everything worked. You know, right. he's the guy that said, don't worry, these ghosts will wake up here uh, eventually. And then he hits the home run to win the game in the World right. Series. It was an unfettered <laughs> run. I'm curious to see how he responds because this is the first time really there's ever been a knock against this guy. And it's and you're right, he's not in his comfort zone. But if you're asking me as a Yankee fan... If I'm okay yeah. with Giancarlo Stanton. You're thrilled. Yeah, I'm yeah. good with that, just so you know. Yeah, because, you, yeah, you own two major league teams. Isn't that nice? You just say, well, hey, we need a player. Let's trade him up to New York. Like, Trey, let's do it this way. All right? Because now you'll get mad this way, I think. I okay. hope. David Ortiz. David Ortiz. Okay? Red Sox, great. He is allowed ownership. Doesn't have enough money. He's going to pay himself $5 million a year. And he's allowed to own the Minnesota Twins, let's just say. And what he uses the Twins for is he uses them as a, ve- a vehicle to trade whatever the Red Sox need back to the Red Sox. Wouldn't that make you upset? I mean, come oh. on, Trey, think about that. Oh, David look, Ortiz is taking plays from the Twins and no. giving them to the Red Sox. I, I get it. I get what you're saying. But the premise was, as a Yankee fan, are you upset? And I'm like, no, I'm yeah, not at right. all. Yeah. Yeah, you should be thrilled. You should be the happiest baseball fan on earth right now. This really guy, should. I don't, I don't yes. know, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I personally, to, to to end this one before I move on, I don't know why one Marlins fan would would put on a Marlins jersey and pay money to go watch that team this year. It's going to be really, right. it really interesting. Yeah. All right, we got a, a beef stew for you, but we got a little sound before it. In May, you guys on the Levitard show, you guys ordered two pair of the Zo twos. They finally came this week, but there was an issue. Yes, just in time for the holidays. Order in May. Can I get a picture of the shoes we ordered? Because uh, they, they're different shoes. This of is course un- they're different like, shoes. Un- they're low-top shoes, uh, black. They got Lonzo's number on the side there, number three. Before I open this box here on whatever it is LeVar Ball sent us for, what was this, $1,000? Was it a th- We bought $1,000 worth of shoes. And now the shoes are here. Go. He's pulling one out. Oh. And here is the big baller brand. That's right a different there. shoe. That is a different shoe. It's, it's a, a different shoe, it, yes. It's a higher top. It's not it's not what I ordered. So you guys didn't get what you ordered, talked about it on right. air. So do you have a bigger beef that it took seven months to get there, or they sent you the wrong shoes? Oh, I'm glad because, listen, it was Dan's money, so I don't care. I'm glad they sent them the wrong <laughs> shoes, so I'm good with that. <laughs> what if it was your money? If it was your money, what uh, would you be mad at? Can we play at? the David Ortiz argument? Yeah. But this this was yeah. your, uh, money. Uh, your this money. This is your money, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it was my money, yes, I'd be upset that I got the wrong shoes. Really what we're upset about is, 
is that we got those for listeners. That Those are shoes that we're giving to listeners, and they were expecting the originals, and now they're getting that. But that's what happens when you're running a shoe operation out of the basement of your house. I mean, that's it. <laughs> and you're the only employee. I mean, that's it. What, what else can you do? I mean, so I guess, you know, listen, at least we got the shoes. But, but Dan is right, if you heard it in that clip. Uh, if you want to get these for the next holiday season, next Christmas, you should order them right now. <laughs> Because there may be a backup. There oh may be gosh. a backup. The, the, the other thing yes. is, if there's only one employee, there's really no one else to blame, right? It's only, yes. It can only fall on one person. Right. Yeah, that's right. We wanted to call customer service, but who, like, who we're calling LeVar Ball is who we're calling in you the might, basement you, of his You house. might be on yes. hold for a while when he's in Lithuania. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. right. <laughs> for that. Yes. All right, Stu, we appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks very much. See you, man. All right, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Trey, what do we call Fridays now? What are we calling it? What Friday. are the kids calling it? Friday. 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 Yeah. Okay. I, listen, I don't care what we call it as long as you're playing golf at 2.30 this afternoon and have a drink in your hand. Okay? There it is, my friend. The secret sauce. Right. Hey, everyone. Mike Golick here. Support from Mike and Mike podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I've never felt more alive. Disclaimer, GEICO cannot guarantee you will feel more alive. You either possess functioning respiratory and circulatory systems, or you do not, or you are a zombie. If you are indeed a brain-starved zombie and you would like to save money on car insurance, the GEICO legal team applauds your excellent life choices, even in your shambling afterlife. But we strongly encourage you to visit GEICO.com or download the GEICO app. Please stay a minimum of 500 feet away from our large and presumably delicious, delicious brains. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Rocking your way to the weekend here on Golik and Wingo. Glad you're with us on a Friday morning presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line and those with the dulcet tones of our Steelers reporter Jeremy Fowler and Tom Brady talking about the big matchup this week. And if we got the big matchup, we got to bring in the big man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Damian Woody is here with us, two-time Super Bowl champ, two-time Pro Bowler, uh, and uh, honestly, a guy who breaks down film in the football as well as anybody else because he knows it starts up front. Uh, and let's start right there, Damian, with this matchup, which everybody can see thinks is probably going to be for home field advantage in the mm-hmm. AFC. Pittsburgh hosting New England, although Jacksonville is still in the mix because of a tiebreaker situation they have with Pittsburgh. The the, the front line for the New England Patriots has been a problem this season. Mm-hmm. Now they go up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, second only to Jacksonville in sacks, with 41 on the year. Marcus Cannon, their right tackle, put on injured reserve. We saw what happened to Fleming on the Monday night game where they got after Tom Brady and hit him a bunch of times. I think they only sacked him twice. What's the biggest concern for the Patriots? Is it their defense against the Steelers' high-powered offense, or can they protect Brady? I think it's can they protect Brady because Brady, you know, Brady's not like an Aaron Rodgers type of guy right. who can get out of the pocket and make things happen outside the pocket. Clearly what, what you've seen from Pittsburgh is, They've really invested on that side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball, especially in the front seven. Uh, you know, you got TJ Watt, you know, Bud Dupree. They got some couple young, you know, a couple guys in the interior that can push the pocket. And I think that's going to be the key to the game. We always talk with Brady. You got to get him off the spot. You can't, he doesn't really feel like the edge around him. You got to get guys pressuring him up the middle. And I, and I think what you're going to see from Pittsburgh, they're going to mix up with, with some blitz. But a lot of those line stunts to kind of create that, simulate that pressure up the middle because that's when you can force a guy like Brady to make mistakes. I wonder, I wonder during a week like this. <laughs> <laughs> that, well done. I, hold on, hold they, on. Wait, we got to put the ball. Cause hold on, can we do that again? Up, I heard that like yeah. mo- like a couple times. Is, oh, it, yeah. is this like a? Oh, we're like a new, play that oh, okay. again. Play they, that. <laughs> they, they gave us a choice when, when this when this started in, in the other studios. We're out was that, with Greeny. They, they, it was just basically. Uh, you know, oh, so just, it's my fault. Thanks a lot. No, no, no. Thanks so a lot. We're in this studio, and you can manually turn them on and off. And right. they asked us. They said, "Do you guys want to turn your own mics on or off, or do you want us to do it?" And we're we're grown adults. Right. We're grown men. We can turn our own mics on and off. Obviously, we can't. <laughs> but we're going to continue to do it because it makes for great fodder. Um, uh. What I was trying to say was. For a big, what is considered a monster game here, mm-hmm. right, with New England and Pittsburgh, how does Bill 
Belichick treat a week like this. While we all, and, and players know it too, you know what game may have more meaning than another. But how does Bill deal with it from week to week, whether you're going to play a winless Cleveland one week and then this for home field advantage possibly the next week? You know, I th- I think like anyone who follows the Patriots, you always kind of get a clue. Like when, when Bill Belichick has his like pressers, literally he treats everyone the same. The way he, you know, exudes like all, like all the great, this is a, you know, this is a great team. Even if they're playing the Cleveland Browns, he'll find a lot of different ways to kind of spotlight positives about a team because he doesn't want his guys to think to get overconfident. He wants everybody to be focused. Don't laser players focused. see through that, though? I mean, you're sitting there, and, yeah. and he's trying to tell you why this 0-13 Cleveland Brown defense is going to give you guys trouble who have two or three losses on the year. And, and I get it because you don't want to take anybody softly, but is there a part that says, man, okay, I, I, how much can I buy into this? Uh, it's a it's a great Jedi mind trick, you know, obviously. <laughs> you know, it plays well, played, well, played, well, played, well, played, well played. played. But um, – what happens is the way he reinforces it, man, I'm telling you, you don't want to be in those those film sessions because I don't care if you're playing a 0 and 13 Browns. Like he will bring down the thunder on you if you're not on top of your game in those in those film sessions. And it's the same every week. And I think that's one of the things that made Coach Belichick so great is that he doesn't he doesn't try to deviate depending on who the opponent is. He is the same guy and he prepares the team the same way every single week, and that's why those guys come out so laser-focused regardless of who the opponent is. Well, that's the interesting thing because Mike Tomlin has sort of taken the exact opposite approach here. Which is surprising. Very. He started, I think, uh, after the uh, Packers game, alluding to, hey, now we got this showdown in a couple of weeks. It was almost like his team needed to hear it, and this is what he had to say finally now that the matchup is here. I love it. You know, um, It's good to be in big games. It's better to be in big games than ones that nobody's watching. You know, um, we we better we better be appreciative of of this spot and not resist it in any way, but embrace it uh, because this is what we've been fighting for since March. You know, to be in these type games against these type people, um, why would you fight that? It, it's just, I mean, I I get that's how everyone feels, but why? It just seems. I don't know. It just seems so counterintuitive, right? I mean, Bell is like, "Hey, it's a game. What we're on to Cincinnati. Right. This is the next game." He's been talking about this game for three weeks now, and the, and the the problem is when you do that, and let's say you don't win, what's the temperature of the room going to be? We all know, like, <clears throat> there's even flows in a season, right? And you know, one week you can have the worst thing you could be in in a football in a football season is on an emotional roller coaster. And there are different styles. Coaches have different styles. I get it. You know, Coach Belichick has been, ver- you know, very successful doing it his way. Mike Tomlin has been successful doing his way. I- I've all. I'll say this: When was the last time the the, the Steelers had like a big time win against the Patriots? Uh, well, they're. I mean, uh, in, since it, since Ben's got there, they're they're three and seven, including the playoffs. It, three and seven. The, it just hasn't. It just hasn't happened for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think. Mike Tomlin's really trying to uh, shine a spotlight. Like, guys, we haven't beat these guys in a, in a meaningful spot in a while. Right. Like, let's get let's get it together. Let's get if we could beat this team. Think of the momentum. Think of the how it would help our psyche going into the postseason. Because that's really the Patriots have really been the Steelers' biggest nemesis as far as getting you know getting getting back to a Super Bowl. A lot of good games going on this weekend. One involves a quarterback coming back and Aaron Rodgers as they go, the Packers going to take Carolina. If they lose this game, I think they're going to, they're going to be done. If they win, they still have a shot. What's your expect? I still like Carolina in this game, yeah. even though we've seen Aaron come back from a long layoff the last game of the season against the Bears and destroy him, uh, to get into the playoffs. What's your expectation of an Aaron Rodgers coming back? You know, the one thing I'm going to watch is he going to be the Aaron Rodgers that we saw pre-injury because you know he got hurt. Roll out Rodgers, Roll, right? Exactly because he got hurt in the Minnesota game doing what he does best, and that's making plays outside the pocket. Now that he's come back from that 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 surgery, are we going to see? Are we going to see that same type of guy, or is he going to be more cautious play from the pocket, which in effect hurts Aaron Rodgers because of his playmaking ability outside the pocket? Again, like you said. 
I like Car- I like Carolina's game, their defense, the way they can get after a quarterback. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm really interested to see how does Aaron Rodgers play like the Aaron Rodgers that we've been accustomed to seeing. Well, that, that's the thing. I mean, if if you're coming back, you have to be that guy, right? You have to be all in, right? You, you have to be the guy that was the I don't want to say swashbuckler, but the guy that just can make second level plays. In other words, the first play's not there. I'm going to use my mobility because he is sneaky mobile. Oh, absolutely, uh, and, and 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 make that big play normally to Jordy Nelson. And, and is is there any rust factor for you with him? Because the last time we saw him come back from a big layoff, it was I think after about the same number of games, seven or eight. Uh, in week thir- in week seventeen of the twenty thirteen season, he threw for over three hundred yards and two touchdowns in Chicago, including a forty eight yard touchdown strike to Randall Cobb to win the game and win the division. Do you expect there to be any sort of rust from him? If there's rust from Aaron Rodgers, he's still like a top five quarterback. How about yeah. it? <laughs> I mean, I just that's just the way I feel. I've always said that you know, just all the all the things that you want your quarterback Aaron Rodgers to me is the is the is the guy in the, in the National Football League. Right. So even if he comes back a little rusty. He's still good enough to win to win any game he steps on the field for. And again, uh, you, you just got to let if you and you got to trust the the play calling too. Let him be who he is. Because he has to oh, be that yeah, way. Yeah. Because yes. uh, Damien, as you know, coming back from an injury, there's there's physically you've rehabbed an injury, and the doctor says you can play. And there's mentally going right. out there and trusting yourself to do everything that you can do on that injury. Yeah, listen, if I step between the white lines, you know, as my if I step out there. Everything else goes out the window. Excuses, everything. I don't want to hear anything. If you're stepping out there on the field, then the expectation is I'm going to play like the guy that I was before. Right. And that's just that's the bottom line. And, boy, Packer fans love to see that. Uh, if they can get by Carolina, then it gets really interesting, although Carolina is going to be a very, very tough opponent. Damian Woody in studio here looking at the NFL games coming up this weekend. And uh, we are also kind of doing a would-you-rather Site with Damien with with Trey to kind of get to know Trey a little bit, and I like this one here, and it has to do with the championship. and I, And I also notice, why do you have a Super Bowl ring? I never see you wear that. Why all of a sudden you're wearing a Super Bowl ring when you're in sitting next to a guy who played in the year nine years I and know never why. got to the second round of the round of playoffs? Do you want me to? Are you like sensitive? Do you want me to take it off? I, I it, it, you know what? Does it, it bother hurts. you? Yes. Yes, it does. I'm sorry. That I, is, I'd, I'd like you to leave. <laughs> my, my wife gets me dressed, so sometimes so she, she put, laid it out for you. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes well, I can't say anything that. then. I mean, that's because that's just fantastic. I, I I figure there's a reason you have it on. I'm sure we'll find out at some point later today what that is. But in a would you rather, Travis asked, would you rather make the championship winning play but never play another down after that, or be a starter your whole career? But never win a championship. That's a, that's actually a great question. That is a great question, <sighs> big man. As as he's wearing a ring over there, but make Polish the that make, thing up, but, but make Polish the that champ- thing up. So so ba- say it's basketball. I don't care anything. Game winning, you won the 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 championship because of what you did, but then you're done, or you're starting your entire career but never win a championship. I want the I want to be part of that exclusive fraternity. That wins a championship, yes, and then and then you're the reason why. Yeah, I mean, you not only you won set it, it up, but words. you have that for the rest of your life that you're the reason why. Yet you I, are done. <laughs> no one could ever take it away from me. That's true. So I'll take that. I yep. think I would probably take that as well because you don't have one, right? Again, I no, just no, said that. that. You want, I mean, was, that seriously? was that shade? No, no, he, he, no. Why is that? John Dorsey over here <laughs> no, just no. lobbing <laughs> stuff up. Why? Why? No. Why I'm asking that because that means it takes away everything else you did in your career. Everything else, well, but nothing else equaled making that game-winning play. You know, there was a, there was a hockey player, and then hopefully I could monetize it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and then, that, that's there where is. there it is. There, there it is. is. Oh, did yes. I say that out loud? Yeah, there was a hockey player named Mike Gartner who was once at. I mean, he, at one point he was yeah. the leading scorer in the NHL, and they said, "Would you would you give away all your accomplishments for one Stanley Cup?" And he said, "Honestly, I don't think I would. Look, I wanted to win a Stanley Cup." But I'm proud of the things that I accomplished in this game. I'm proud of the things that I've done. And I get that the ultimate goal is to win, but he did a lot and achieved well, a lot. Well, the question we would ask people sometimes is, if you're in the Hall of Fame but never won a championship, would you give up your Hall of Fame status to have won a championship? Oh, That's hell the, no. That is no. the ultimate. No. No, I, I, I couldn't I no, either, no. man. Hey, no. As much of a team guy as I was, and, and we were in a team sport, right. I mean, you you had to rely on the guy next to you. 
I don't think I'm giving up my no Hall of Fame way. to, to no give way. that up for a because championship. Because the Hall of Fame yeah. is about individual excellence at what you chose to do. Yeah. That's why I hate it when rings are considered for the, for the Pro Football Hall right. of Fame. Because it's not about, did your team win a championship? It's about, were you among the very best that ever played the game at your position? That's what the Hall of Fame is You do about. realize I'm, I'm in the... Radio Hall of Fame. That's exa- and in the yeah. in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. <laughs> and in the Wrestling yeah, Hall of Fame. Yeah, but you know what? Unfortunately, that's not for wrestling. I got it as for being, I think they call it a great Dude, American or wh- something like that. Did you that. ever see the movie Beverly Hills Cop? Yo, the yeah. lie was working. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> as it I was, was working. As I was being inducted to that Hall of Fame, I'm watching these like wrestlers. And I wrestled in, in, in high school and college. But watching these wrestlers go in for wrestling, I'm like... God, I wish I was going in for wrestling. I you wish I was you that went great. in, bro. I know. You went in. I know. I that's all that matters. In 100 years from now, I could say I was a wrestler. And you, yeah, go that's ba- right. and you can go back in 100 years and tell people you're in the Hall there of Fame. So either way it works. There you go. Okay. Uh, Rams, Seahawks. Really, this, this is a game the Rams have to win, right? Yeah. I mean, at, you know, they lost last week. But I think th- for the Rams, this is more for the psyche of the Rams. Yes. You know, you talk about the king, the king of the hill, the Seahawks. If you're the Rams, you go out there and beat the Seahawks. Yeah. Think of the momentum that you would have, like going into the postseason, you know, as opposed to, boy, you lost last week, then you lose, you lose to the Seahawks. They've accomplished a lot this year as far as kind of changing the narrative of the, of the team. But boy, that would be a downer if they, if they lost to the is, Seahawks. Is there an effect of Seahawks have been in big game situations a ton? And this is a team in the Rams while they're playing well this year. You want to talk about rubber meat in the road. You're right. in December. You lose this game, you lose the division lead, you're in Seattle. Could the pressure of that and the bright lights get to them? Sometimes, you, you know, sometimes you say, like, with, with a young team that has never been in this situation, they don't know any better. They just go out there and play. But a lot of times, especially in football, man, you know how it is, man. Football is so situational. You depend on the guys, the guys next to you. And that, to me, that really, really matters in big games like this. Coming down the stretch. So along those lines, take us in the in the weeds for this one. They're going to Seattle. We know how hard it is to hear, and that affects the offensive line more than anybody. Yes. So tell us what goes on and what will have to go on in that Ram offensive line so they're not getting off the ball late or not giving up five yards and just how difficult it is when you can't hear. Listen, your peripheral vision has to be on point because playing up there in, in the Pacific Northwest, you can't hear a thing, especially you talking about a divisional game in December, two teams that's vying to, that's vying to go to the playoffs. I mean, that place is going to be nuts. So you know, as as a Ram offensive lineman, the, the worst thing you could do is jump off sides. Now you're first and fifteen right. or third and long get behind the it, play, it plays right into the way the Seahawks are built defensively with that with that front. So you're just trying to stay ahead of the sticks. That's the best thing you could do. Be methodical. Try to keep Russell Wilson on the sideline as much as possible because that dude makes big plays at yep. you know in big games. Look, he's probably not going to win it, but you can make a really compelling case that Russell Wilson is the MVP of this coming league. down the stretch. Yeah, he's, Look, he's been playing. If like it, it doesn't come through Russell Wilson, they have no offense whatsoever. Big man, yes. great to have you on the show. Thanks, NFL man. Live today, NFL right? NFL Live. Got the go. tape off against Teddy Bruschi. I'm ready. That's Uh-oh. why he brought the ring. Oh, yeah, I figured that's there was a reason why for he it. brought the that's ring. That's right. Yeah.